Hello, my darlings. This is Amish Patel, CEO of the Amish Patel Comedy Corporation, and um, lots to talk about today, guys. Lots to talk about, man. Got some killer, killer karaoke stuff to talk about, and I want to talk about work ethic today. I got to talk about work ethic today because here's the thing about work ethic, guys. Here's the thing about work ethic. I think today I'm going to tell you guys the number one tip to boost your work. The number one tip. The most important thing you need to know about boosting your work ethic, I got it for you. It's so important. It's so important. That's why I don't even feel bad just going into advertising myself for a minute. Guys, make sure you go to laughsareup.com. Um, before we get started with the podcast, before, before I get into all that, make sure you go to laughsareup.com. Um, when you're there, you can join the mailing list. Um, you'll be notified of uh, when uh, the new show, when live shows are coming up. When um, new episodes, new sh- uh, episodes are up, when new bits are up, basically you'll be informed when laughs are going up in the culture, in the community. If you join the mailing list, and you will be, you'll know how to become an investor because it, there's some great investment opportunities available as well here in the Mish Patel Comedy Corporation. Um, but you got to go to laughsareup.com, our official website, and uh, join the mailing list, and then you, you'll know where to go from there. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a beautiful, and then you get to be part of this beautiful, beautiful, lovely journey that I'm on here. This beautiful journey that we're on together. Oh my God. This tip that I'm going to give you guys about work ethic. Oh my God. It's so important. It's so important what I'm going to tell you guys. But um, first, I just want to talk about... uh, Oh my God. Was that karaoke yesterday? So fun, karaoke. Karaoke, so fun. I go on Tuesday, but so many silly characters. I want to make a mockumentary about karaoke singers. Dude, it's everyone. A lot of characters. A lot of characters. And I love them. And I, I, I do love them. And I just want to preface before the next thing I'm going to say that I do love them. But I remember I was working on this show. I hosted this Friday night comedy show. And then after the show, we would have karaoke. For like four or five years, I did it. And, um, and I remember I was talking to the other guy who ran it with me. And he was saying that like... He was just telling me about his girlfriend issues or whatever, or like he's not meeting girls or it's been a while, whatever. And I was like, listen, brother, we're like, we're doing this every Friday. We need to go out to where real people are because it, no, it's my, and look, I love karaoke. It's a lot of fun, but the K heads, the karaoke heads, it's a, it's a silly bunch. It is a silly bunch. They're a silly, interesting bunch. They're, they're different. They're not, they're not that office crowd. They're not the. They're just not like, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. It's a silly, but we could, I could make a whole mockumentary about them. They're so fun though. They're great people. Good people. Great people. But the people who are, there's people who are like, I do this. I do karaoke every night. I remember one time I was leaving a show and there was a guy that came. Okay. So, so when I was running that Friday night show, there was a guy who came to that show to karaoke every Friday night for like f- three years, every Friday night, never bought a drink. Never bought a drink. Came, got a Coke or a water, and just sang as many songs as he could. And he sang karaoke like he was practicing. And one night, I took the bus home with him. And we're, we're waiting for the bus. This is years ago before I had a car. I have a car now, obviously. I'm doing way better. But we're taking the bus. And uh, nothing, nothing wrong with taking the bus, by the way. Listen, a lot of people listening to this are on the bus right now. It's fine. It's beautiful. I love you. I had to take it. I had to take the subway. I'd take the bus. It's fine. It's fine. We'll get there. But um, this guy's, we're, we're, we're waiting at the bus stop for the bus. And uh, this guy's just, he's so passionate about karaoke. <clears throat> this, is what, this is what he loves. This is what he does every single night. He's doing karaoke. And he says to me, he's like, Amish, where would I be if I started karaoke five years ago? Where would I be if I didn't listen to my parents? When my parents said no karaoke, if I said no, I said I'm going to do karaoke. And I told my parents five years ago, I'm doing it. Where would I be, Amish? Where would I be? And I was like, dude, um, I think he's like 50. Like he's 45 or 50. I mean... You know, that's special, too. Look, I don't want to insult it. I don't, I'm this, I don't want this to sound like I'm making fun, quite frankly. I don't want it to sound like that because that's a beautiful... I love anyone who loves what they're doing. Even if you're doing some dumb shit, I love it, dude. So if you're bringing the heat on karaoke, and he does, he does, right? Then that's you're doing what the Lord put you here to do in that moment. You know what I'm saying? We're here... 
to get the most out of this life. I really think so. And if something fills your heart with joy like that, then that's the Lord saying, you know what? You got to keep doing that. Especially if it's not like drugs or something or just like jerking off or doing something stupid. But it is it is karaoke, meaning like it's it's an active thing. Um, it's, it's in a group. It's not like private room karaoke. It's in a group. You know, he eventually, dude, and, and these guys, this, these karaoke crews, they talk to, they, they're like friends. So you'll do a thing. They treat it. And now what I do is when I go, cause in comedy, we call, if you do a com- stand up comedy show, like if you do like a thing, we call it a set in stand up comedy. Now, when I go to karaoke, I'm like, Hey man, good set. Hey dude, tight set. Is that a new one? You know, like I'll even comment on like, Oh, you did a new song. Cool. Good set, baby. Good set. I, I tell people, and there's actually, and this is going to be very controversial in the stand-up comedy community. This is going to be very controversial in the stand-up comedy community, but I, I've been calling them sets, and I've been saying, you know what? Stage time is stage time. Stage time is stage time, and it's very device, divisive in the Toronto stand-up community because half the comics are like, don't call that stage time. We write jokes. We write original jokes, and we do them every night, and how dare you sully us by calling what the karaoke people do. How dare you call that stage time? And I said, listen, man. Listen, hey, hey, hey. Think about this. We are performers. Like, I'm also an actor on TV. I'm a comedy actor, okay? Mostly I do comedy acting. That's kind of what I want to get into. And also, I want to do comedy acting, but then if it gets to that moment, remember when, remember every, like, three years, like, they put a comedy actor in a dramatic movie and all of Hollywood loses their mind. Like, every three years we do this, where someone who just does comedy and then they put him in a drama and then everyone in Hollywood's like, oh my God, Ah, ah, he did a drama. Ah, ah, ah." So beautiful. His comedy, it came through in a beautiful, it was so beautiful, it came through the vulnerability of the comedic vulnerability. Okay, you know what? They do all that when someone kills it, but until then... They treat comedy actors like garbage. I'll tell you that right now. There's no respect for a comedy actor in this business. There's no respect. There's co- Listen, I'm, I'm an Emmy nomination applicant, people. I'm an Emmy nominee. I, I've done five seasons of, and a movie of an, on, a, on a sitcom. You think that I'd be front of the line in this city? <laughs> you think that I'd be front of the line? No, man. There's some casting directors that are like, uh, no, we don't need to see Amish. Dude, what do you want, people? I mean, what do you want? But anyway, the point is, is that when we do this karaoke, I treat it like sets. I'm not going there getting wasted. I do my comedy set. That's where I got to go to open mic. I got to try out new jokes. That's my job. Okay? I do my, I do that set. And then... I go to a karaoke on Tuesday, maybe two, three times a week. I'll go to a karaoke, okay? And when these are getting hot, the Tuesday night one that I go to is, is so hot now. And because, quite frankly, because we brought the heat on it. Also, the KJ on Tuesdays is incredible. Uh, Mike Gable, Hot Breath Karaoke, incredible. So funny, dude. So funny. Fully gets, he, he almost fully is like that character from, a, from a, if there was a karaoke mockumentary. He almost is playing that character, but he is that character, so he's not playing it. You know what I mean? You know how things are getting so meta now? It's almost like how Samuel Jackson like, started doing shitty movies, but he, did, he owned it, so it was like, you know what I mean? Like he was doing dumb, like he did snakes on a, like first he did a couple of bad ones, and people were like, well, are we going to punish him for this? And then he was still badass about it. So everyone's like, okay, I guess not. I guess if you're Samuel Jackson, you can just do a bad movie. Whatever. He's owning it. So we all go with it. And then he becomes this guy who's like, no, I can do whatever the fuck I want. That's kind of what this guy is for karaoke. That's kind of how we're doing karaoke. I mean, a, bu- a, couple, a bunch of us. But this KJ, that's how he hosts it. Like he hosts it like, like I know this is dumb. <laughs> But I'm going to go full dumb on it and make it so funny and fun too. Hot breath karaoke, guys. I don't know how else to describe it. I think he might get offended by how I described it. He might get offended. Anyway, I just want to say, look, as a, as a comedian, that is my job. I got to do my karaoke. Like, think about what we're doing on karaoke. We're working on dances. The dances that we're working on. I got dance moves for 80s, for 80s shit. Like, like if, a, if an 80s song comes on, I can just drop dance moves to that. Like I have dance moves that people are like, okay, good. Like they, and my dance moves are so good 
that people are like, okay, is it ironic? Is it he's really dancing like that? But his rhythm is so good. You know what I mean? Like his rhythm is so tight. And that's why last week I, I ran into the issue where some, so there were some girls there. And this is in a bar, by the way. This is in a bar that serves alcohol. We're in a bar and I'm dancing so good to an 80s song, I think. But my dance moves are so tight that these other girls are like, hey, you're so good. Can you show me how to dance? And then she just put her bum right in front of me and backed up. You know, the entitlement, right? So anyway, she just starts dancing with me. And then this other comic, Greg Houston, he walks over and he goes, Amish, you're like 40. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny though. I, keep, I think I've mentioned it like nine times now. I think this is becoming, look, I know it's becoming, this is going to be like a running joke of the show or something. But Amish, you're like 40. Wow, that's so funny, right? So offensive, though. He was basically saying it because the girls were so young. But they weren't. They were in their 20s. Hey, I don't need to explain this. Hold on, I'm getting a call. Huh, my mom, I'm at my parents' house right now. And she's downstairs. But their house is so bloody big that she just calls me. How goofy. Don't judge me because I'm at my parents' house. Listen, my dad's on a machine right now. I got to come hang out with them. They're old and they're sad. And they're so sad that I'm not married. So desperate. Um, anyway, yeah, parent, mom getting so desperate. Like, just relax. And she's, they're just so sad. I used to do this thing where... But you know what actually happened a couple weeks ago? This guy came over. This family friend of ours who's... Um, I have a video about this too. But <laughs> this family friend came over who's their son like is like a con artist, in and out of jail, all this shit. And the dad came over and just was like, <laughs> was just like this. Hey, so you're a comedian. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> like he just, he, he, everyone was just so happy with me. You know what I mean? Like his, his kid is like a hard con artist, dude. Like con artist, like took like maybe a, just like stole a million dollars just off the parents, <laughs> his own parents. And they still have to send him money. Like, he'll, he'll still send them shit being like, I'll kill myself. I'll kill myself. Send me money. And dude, they'll send him money. And the dad's just like, you know, I got to send him. Yes, yeah, mental illness. Even I was like, that's mental illness, dude. That's, look, you get one like that. What are you going to do? You get one. It might come out like that. And it's crazy how people like that are like, when are you going to have kids? And I'm like, dude, look at your kid. <laughs> but... You know, they kind of have that attitude of like, listen, man, the game is the game. You might have a screwed up one, but you'll probably have good ones. It'll be fun. Have a kid. Pass it on. You got to pass it on. It is weird, eh, that we're all just alive and nobody knows what we're doing here. That's fucked up. That's weird, dude. It's actually a little irresponsible if you think about it. We don't do anything without instructions. We don't do anything. Like, if there was some kind of machinery that you had to operate, you wouldn't just go in and start using it. But that's kind of what our body is. You know what I'm saying? Our physical body is just kind of something you're born into, and then you kind of, like, start working it. You know? And you go dancing, maybe, or something, and you learn how to move or whatever. Or, you know, you do, or you learn to just live your life in a way to keep it, keep it alive. But we're just kind of here. It is weird that we're just kind of alive. And um, nobody really knows what we're doing here. And, but, you, but people are like, no, but you got to keep doing it. You got to keep doing it and you got to pass it on. You have to pass it on. Oh, my God. My mom's such a psycho. Hold, hold on a second. Hi, Mom. Hi. I have to pass on. How do you do it? How do you do it? Wow. I mean, how do I not just live here? I'm just here because of, like my parents are like my dad's, you know, on a machine and I gotta come see them, man. They're such, they're so desperate. They're so like lonely and stuff. But um, <laughs> they're like my kids now. 
I have to come and be like, hey, you guys okay? You having fun? But um, but also, like, I can just shoot here too, right? Because they basically built the second floor of this house thinking like, oh, when Amish gets married and has kids, they'll all move in here. Ah! <laughs> they bought the house! It's huge, man. Yeah, it's kind of dumb that I live in Toronto. Maybe the Amish Patel Comedy Corporation, maybe I got to just like call it a day, come back here. And here's the thing. I'm cool enough that I can live with my parents and just date people. Are you kidding me? It's 2019. The economy's dead. The economy's so dead. I could 100%. I could date a fucking model in here. Get out of my face. I've dated fucking tens. Tens. Living here, I mean. Not like... Also, I remember one girl I did. Yeah, no. Listen, there's a whole market of tens who love sixes. And I know some of you guys are looking at me and you find it hard to believe. There's a whole market of tens who love sixes. It's a market. It's a market. And listen, we're going to make a separate episode about that. We're going to make a separate episode about that because the people need to know about that. Tens who love sixes, huge market. Huge market. Un- pretty untapped. Pretty untapped because who has it in them to go say what's up? Nobody will go say what's up. So they're just being hit. So there's all these hot girls. They love sixes, but they're only the only people who have the guts to say what's up are like other tens. And they're just like, eh. they don't like it. Dude, there's some girls that they need. They need a few red flags just to be attracted to you. Like they want, they need you to be like, not really have a job and be in debt and fucking gorgeous, dude. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that was my mom on the phone right there. And she basically said, (laughs) what are you doing? I made food for you. (laughs) Come down and eat. She called twice. Come down and eat. I made food. Just come down and eat the food. So I'm going to go eat. I'm going to make a note. Okay, cool. This is what we're going to (laughs) do. I'm going to make a note because I feel like so far we've talked about some good shit here. Um, oh, come on. What are you doing? Let's go, Mac. Let's go, baby. You've got the comedy corporation here. The people are watching, Mac Daddy. Fucking my Mac. Look at this. It's not turning on. How? This has never happened in my life. Oh, there we go. And I'm watching something ridiculous. Marvel Avengers Endgame. Why am I watching this? Dude, sometimes <laughs> a guide. Okay. What is it, these YouTube channels? They just call it a guide, but it's like a guide to a TV show? Get out of here. Um, or like a movie series. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to make a quick note. I'm going to go eat and come back because my parents are ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> oh, and by the way, go to laughsrup.com. A lot of great shows coming up. One in Brampton, where these guys live. Uh, Mississauga, down the street. And then uh, I'm doing my play, The Win at Life Mega Expo, in uh, Ottawa and Montreal this summer. So make sure you check that out. But also, just go to laughsrup.com. That's where all the live shows are. That's where you can join the mailing list. And then you can be part of the community, my darling. You can be in the community. And then you'll know when the laughs are going up. Um, but today we're going to talk about... Today what I've talked about is cave fire. And then, dude, I got to talk about work ethic. Work ethic? Oh, my God. The work ethic tip that I'm going to give you guys... It's so tight. And we're back. Okay, my darlings. Thanks for... Uh, I mean, I guess it's not really a break for you. It just kind of stopped and started again. My parents, man. So cute. They are so, they are silly. They're like little kids. Old people are like little kids, but nobody cares about them. It's so... I mean, it's, it's sad. Like, I mean, I love my parents, right? But there's so many people. They just stop talking. They just yell at their parents. Like, they just stop talking to their parents. You know what I'm saying? Or they're like, they just put them in a home, and they're like, oh, okay, who has time? But when you go and talk to them, they are actually kind of cutie. Like, senile people. Like, they're getting into that. They're getting into that senile time. Um, anyway. <laughs> That's why. I, I, to- I literally told her. There's so many times where I'm like, Mom, I'm not hungry. And then she'll just she'll just call. Like, 20 minutes later, I made food for you. And I said, no, I, I'm not hungry. No, but I made it. Okay. Like so many times, so many times because they just have nothing to do. They're literally sitting there and they're like, what do I do? You don't have any kids to take care of. So I guess I'll just feed you then. I, she has nothing to do. They're just hanging out. Dude, I literally told her, I was like, I give her time. I'm like, no, I don't want to eat until like two. It's 1220. She's like, I made food, but I made it. Why? I didn't even, t- I told you not to make it though. But I told you not. But I, okay, but it's uh, it's already made though. You eat it while it's hot. Don't eat it once it gets cold. She diverts the, the argument. This like whatever whatever health plan. That's why you can't move in with your parents. You can't do it, dude. No respect for the new dieting trends. 
I told her, I'm intermittent fasting, lady. I mean, inter- I got to really put my foot down. And then it's like, they're sad. They're like, well, I think you should eat. Just eat. When I put, when I make it, just eat it. And I'm like, don't make it though. Then that's, the, that's where they bypass the argument. They make it. And then they're like, now they're like past that argument where I'm like, I told you not to make it. Now we're past that argument. And now we're into the argument of like, it's hot though. Don't, you're going to let it get cold. It won't even taste good once it's cold. So now diverted that argument onto like, oh, so you want to eat cold food? Idiot. Just eat it now. That's kind of what they do. So brown. So ethnic. Um, but anyway, tens who love sixes. We're going to get into that in another episode, guys. Tens who love sixes. That's a whole other topic I need to get into, into an, in another episode. Because tens who... They, dude, huge market. Huge market. Tens who love sixes. There's thousands. I go on Tinder every day. Not because I... Not because I think any of them will match with me, because they won't. They, I, nobody swipe, nobody matches with me on Tinder. I get zero matches on Tinder. I almost sometimes I felt like maybe it's broken, maybe there's some kind of glitch going on here. But then I realized, one, apparently nobody likes brown people on the internet on like these online dating sites. Brown guys, guys, if you're a guy, uh, Asian Asian men, lowest, garbage, basically. Asian men on dating websites, you are garbage. We are we are garbage, I should say. But <clears throat> um, there is a huge market of tens who love sixes, and it's great if you can figure out that market and learn how to tap into it. It's a great market to tap into, and that's something that we can talk about on the next episode. But for now, this episode, I do want to wrap up the k- k- fire, the karaoke thing, and then we're going to talk about work ethic. Okay, so the karaoke thing. I was telling my buddy I was running that show for like a year where we did comedy and then karaoke after and he's like man I haven't met anyone and I'm like dude we can't do this every Friday if you do this every Friday yeah you're not gonna meet people because it is like a karaoke crowd they keep this it's the same people that keep coming out and also um you know and not to be I don't want to be rude but they are it's a silly bunch you know it is a silly bunch it's like I said one guy came dude he came to every so we did comedy and then karaoke right every Friday for like it's five years, okay? Comedy, then karaoke right after. And the karaoke was supposed to start at 11. This guy came every week for three, four years, never bought a drink, never came to the comedy show, and sometimes the comedy show would go a little late, and it would go into like, it would be like 11, 10, and he'd be like, hey guys, uh, isn't karaoke supposed to start? Where's the karaoke? And I'm like, there's a fucking headliner on stage, idiot. Just listen, just get a joke in. Can you get a goddamn joke in? It's just, it's like 11.15. Oh, uh, the karaoke uh, start late today? What's going on? Oh, because you paid such good money, water, for three years? The guy got fucking water for three years every single week. And he works on his karaoke like it's a set. I was the first one to start calling them sets, but he works on his karaoke. Like, he pay, he has three or four songs that he wants to work on, and then he'll do those every week for like six months. And then he'll, and then he'll do a new song, and then he'll do the new song, and then he'll come off stage and be like, uh, what did you think of my new song? What did you think of uh, Billy Idol? I did Billy. I, I did. I did Billy Joel today. What did you think? No, I thought. I don't. I don't know if I did the chorus correctly, but you know, I'm working on it. I'm definitely a new set, and I'm gonna keep working on it. And maybe in a couple of months, it'll be ready. Ready for what? It's karaoke, K Fire, baby, K Fire. This is where we're gonna start getting into work ethic. Because here's 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 um, what got me thinking about work ethic this week. What really got me thinking about it. Um, is and here's the tip here's the tip let's do the tip we're like 20 minutes in i haven't told you the tip yet i'm teasing this tip i haven't told you the tip yet 20 minutes in haven't told you the tip just teasing you with the tip and i like doing that but listen we're gonna do it now okay so here's the tip all right and it's gonna take maybe half an hour it might take an hour now to explain it but basically here's how to get the the most insane the best work ethic ever oh the best work ethic ever here's how you got to do it here's how you got to do it you got to put the joy in the work Ah, hold on. Sounds simple. Sounds like it's easy to do. No, no, no. You got to take the joy. You got to re- You got to go into your brain and do a reprogram and do... Enter um, reprogram in the brain. And you have to reprogram the brain so that the joy is in the work. And here's... It's a complicated thing that we got to get into now because here's the thing about the joy, putting the joy in the work. And this is what I mean about the karaoke people too. Um, you got to put the joy in the work 
Because if you don't put the joy in the work, then you're always disciplining yourself to do the work. Because there's two types of people. And I realized this last week when I was driving back. I was driving back from Hamilton with another comic. And I was driving back with a work ethic hustle kind of guy comic. You know what I'm saying? There's different crews in comedy. There's, it's almost like high school. So in stand-up comedy, there's, it's almost like high school. And there's like the feminist crew. And there's like the brown crew. And maybe the black crew. And maybe there's, a, there's kind of an Italian crew still. Surprising. There's still an Italian crew. You know why? Because Italians are so cool. They really are, you know? They just are the coolest people. They, they almost, as a culture, defined what cool is for a generation. Like, I'm talking about if you look at Hollywood <clears throat> and fashion, they were like, they, they run that shit. They're basically here to be like, hey, you have to be cool. There's even a comic that I was telling this to. Sandro Veri is Sandro. I was, I was like... His comedy, I was like, your comedy is like, his, his purpose on this earth is to tell people, hey, don't live your life like this. Sit, have one coffee, relax. Like it was that kind of thing. And I know that I'm just giving him a Middle Eastern accent, even though he's Italian, but Middle East has that mentality too a little bit. Most like older countries, they kind of have like a, hey, ah, don't be so go, 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 chill out, you know, make sure you look good. You know what I'm saying? Don't be like, like they almost look at this American is it's like a pig. They're just working, 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 so greedy. No. This is not life. Life is uh, sit down, have one coffee, have one biscotti. Okay, so enjoy your life. Dude, even in Woodbridge, and Woodbridge is full of like Italians, but like they haven't even been to Italy Italians, okay? But they they talk like this. They say, "Hey, this is a uh, hey, you know, hey, it's Italian." Like they talk like this. And if you just go to any, if there's a place in Woodbridge that ser- serves coffee, a gas station, dude, you stop at a gas station and they have coffee, there will be three old Italian men just sitting down, t- hey, talk about life. Talk about life. And they'll talk about life and they'll check out girls hard too. Like if someone hot walks in, they'll be like, hey, uh, hey what's going on? Huh? Uh. And then they'll just keep drinking the coffee. Like, they won't go beyond that. Not, like, so inappropriate. So inappropriate. I'm, like, exaggerating. But they'll, they'll sit. They'll talk about, okay, sit. Have one coffee. Have a biscuit, something sweet. Talk about life. I kind of make my Italian Middle Eastern a little bit. And if you find that racist, then you're racist. Because there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with the different cultures coming together like that. Okay? Um, but I'm saying that they have that mentality. Sit down, have, dude, they don't have like our giant coffees that America has. They have these little coffees because they'll have nine in a day. They'll have 19 coffees in a day because here's the thing for every 20 minutes, if you're in Europe, dude, for every 20 minutes of work, okay, sit down, have one coffee, have a biscotti, okay, tell, talk about life. That's how they work. That's, that's, it's a different pace, it's a different way of living life, man. It's not like this Starbucks shit where there's like a giant coffee and it, and I don't know. It's not about consumption. It's about being in the moment and talking to people and living life or whatever, right? Anyway, anyway, the point that I was trying to make is that Toronto stand-up, it's like there's all these different crews. There's an Italian crew. There's a black crew, brown crew. There's a feminist crew. There's, um, there's like an alt-comedy crew. And then there's, the, I would say the white guys are divided into almost like two crews. There's the, there's the alternative comedy that blends into the feminist crew. And then there's the, the like hard work ethic crew and they kind of blend into, they kind of start blending into a conservative kind of a crew a little bit, not totally conservative, but they're all about that work ethic. You know, they're generally Jordan Peterson fans. I'm generalizing, but you know, they're into that, that like hustle, hustle, baby, because they're here to get that money, baby. What's wrong with it? And they would even defend it and be like, what? You know, and I get it, man. Listen, this Jordan Peterson, he's got some banger motivationals. I talked about this last time. But basically, there's like a right-wing side team. It's not alt-right. Like, it's it's very gray. Like, we're all on the spectrum, right? And there's a bunch of people like Jordan Peterson and that whole crew. And then there's people on the left that are calling them Nazis or calling them racist, which I don't agree with, which is like, okay, relax, okay? I, he's a loser, fine, don't call him a Nazi, whatever. But, like, I just mean he's a loser, like, he's a nerd. He's like a, he's a fucking work nerd, this Peterson. He's all like, well, get to work and be a good boy and 
get married and have kids. Why not? It's like, dude, I fucking heard that enough. I don't need it. But that's kind of what he is right now. And he is kind of bringing that. Listen, he's like an immigrant dad for white guys. He's like an immigrant dad for white guys. And maybe white guys need that right now. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's hard to get some goddamn work done without something fucking driving you. You know what I'm saying? And I brought it back to the work ethic. I brought it back to, I know it sounds like I'm jumping around, but I brought it back to the work ethic. And that's what we're going to talk about now is the work ethic. But anyway, the point is, is that, is that there's different crews in comedy. I'm driving back with a comic who is one of these hustle, hustle, let's get it kind of guys. The kind of guy that, that is talking about like, man, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm making moves into America and I'm making moves into Europe. He's the kind of guy that, that if certain people are around him, they get sad. He's that kind of guy. Because he's taught, because without even trying to, he's not doing it on purpose. Because when, 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 because, because I'm into motivational stuff too. And when I get into it with a guy like that, it starts becoming almost like a Joel Osteen. We, the Lord put us here to get it, brother. The Lord put us here to go out and be, and be plentiful and be bountiful. And you know what I mean? Like, like there, there is that Protestant work ethic, and it's a Hindu, uh, Hindus have it too, where they just talk about karma and just doing work for the sake of work. And this is what I mean. You got to put the joy in the work. And this is, a, this is a big conversation we had where he's like, no, no, no. It's not work. It's fun. I'm doing what I love. Work? No. I'm doing what I love. I love working. I love sitting down to figure out a new problem. I love t- tackling it. Dude, there's some people that are like, we got to do work. Ugh. We got to do work. And then there's some people that are like, we get to do work? Yes. More work? Oh, so much joy in that work. Can't wait to do the work because that's where the joy is. The joy is in the work. Oh, thank you, God, for giving us all this work. Dude, there's some people that are like that, dude. How are you going to compete? If you're like a I don't want to do work kind of guy, how are you going to compete with a, ah, the joy is in the work. More work. Thank you, God. Oh, God is great. Work is great. And joy is in the work. And work is great. And God is great for working so hard and giving, giving us all this work. Got to gotta thank God for all this work. Oh, God, you're the best. It's unpaid? Unpaid work? God pays double for that. Yes. God pays double for that. That's my favorite kind. Dude, there's people like that. There's people like that. How are you going to compete? How are you going to compete? If you're just a chill ax, chill out kind of guy, because I got back, I'm driving back with him. Then I got back around another bunch of comics who they weren't part, they're not one of the jocks, what I call the jocks. Because I call them the jocks comics because they're all about set, 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 set. Ten sets a night, set, 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 set. You know what I'm saying? I did eight sets a night, set, 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 set. I did 8,000 sets this year. I know some guys that count sets in a year. They count the sets. They're like, I did 244 sets this year. 244 sets. It's only, uh, it's only February. I had 244 sets. Six sets, six, six sets a night. Set, 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 set. These sets are garbage, by the way. There's only one of them is in front of an actual crowd. The other three or five are like two people, one person. But we're talking about people are going across town. You know, like this is, it's work, man. It's work. You got to go across town. You got to set up logistics, man. You got to find someone who's driving and be like, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you some gas money. Can I roll with you? Okay, cool. We'll both go do this. They'll come to one show. Everyone does their set. And they're like, okay, thank you. Thank, thanks, man. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. They'll all say thank you to the booker. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for the stage time. Thanks, bro. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for the stage time. And then they'll drive to another set. Nobody in the crowd. There's no one there even. But they'll still, they'll do the set. They'll bring the heat on the set. And that's what I mean. There's some people that are like, no, the joy is in the work, brother. The joy is in the work. I just thank God. When I get a set that's not even paid, oh, the Lord's going to pay me double for that set. That means I'm getting better. I'm growing. The joy is in the work. Because when you do the work, you grow and you get closer to God. It's like that. You got to think. There's people who think that. And even if they don't literally believe in God, they do believe that there is this, ah, I'm doing what the Lord put me here to do. I'm doing what... That's kind of how I feel right now, if, quite frankly. I feel like this, dancing, 
on stage. That's what the Lord put me here to do. There's times where I do feel lazy, but there's times where I'm like, let's do it. The Lord put me here to do it. But I got to be around those people. Now, here's the thing. I have a very like influenceable mind, quite frankly. I don't know how people have any kind of strong beliefs. I honestly don't. One strong belief that I have is that like, how do you have, is that it's impossible to have strong beliefs because as soon as you believe something, there's going to be 10 things that debunk that. You know what I mean? I started believing in God even. And even that, it's like, after a while, and, and I'm not the kind of person that wants to insult anyone who believes in God, but after a while, I'm just like, I just don't understand how you can have the conviction of it. You know what I mean? I just don't understand how you can be so sure of that. Or anything, quite frankly, but that especially. It's like, how can you be so sure that you believe in something? You know what I'm saying? So, so, so I find that my beliefs are a little malleable. So if I'm around people that are hustle, hustle, hustle all the time, then my brain's going to be like, well, let's go get it. Oh, yeah, the joy is in the work. Dude, because conversations with them are constant reminders of that. And I think that's what a conversation is. A conversation is like you come with a little tidbit, and then whoever's talking, they kind of bring their thing to it. Like they, you, you, like what, whatever, whoever is in the conversation with you, they want to bring their... So, so basically, if you're talking to someone who's obsessed with like this work ethic, they're just watching motivational shit all the time maybe, and they're working hard, and they love that, and they love that, like getting, getting money and making progress in this life... I'm doing well. I'm moving further ahead. If you're talking to someone like that, then whatever conversation you bring up, the, co- their, the gravity of their belief in this, it slowly pulls the conversation so that no matter what you're talking about, you're going to get, you're going to get like, so therefore the conclusion is, yeah, no, that kind of like, like whatever you're talking about, there's people who are like, oh yeah, yeah, that's it's so interesting because I was, I was just thinking the other day about trying to get myself to work harder and then they'll take whatever story you, whatever conversation you had and turn it into like, that's the meaning of that story is you got to work harder, baby. But then if you're talking to someone who's obsessed with like, like social justice issues, let's say, they'll take the same story and they'll be like, that's why it's so important that we spread the word about Cortez or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's, it's almost like whatever you believe in on a conversational level, you kind of, or, or whatever you're obsessed about, let's say, on a conversational level, you take whatever someone's talking about and then you kind of just slowly pull it towards like, this is what I want to talk about. I think a good conversationalist is, is, is the person who's willing to go furthest down that road of the other, what, what the other person's thinking. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what a good, I, cause, cause I think that's when you're actually getting both perspectives a little bit, but also look, sometimes you're just obsessed. Sometimes you are obsessed with what you're doing and it's all you can think about. And it's all you want to talk about even. And so no matter what someone brings up, you just turn that into like, well, that's why, uh, that's why it's important to put in a new roof every summer. Like no matter what you're talking about, they'll do this and that. They'll even like a new roof every summer. You're thinking like, how can you stretch it? Like, let's just say you're a roof builder and you're obsessed with roofs, right? You could, someone could be talking about like um, something so unrelated, basement. They're talking about bugs in the basement, and then the roofing guy will take that and still be like, well, you know, whether it's bugs in the basement or a slow wear and tear on your roof, that's why you gotta, that's why it's always good to call in a professional, take a look at it, and get it fixed ahead of time because that's the way to do it. Like, that's even, that's natural conversation to a roofer, though. That's natural, com- whatever you're talking about, they can, they can turn it back into, that's why it's so important what I do. Like, not, and I don't mean that people are so arrogant, I just mean like that's, you can just see what people are thinking about maybe. You know what I mean? Because they're always... And then, and then it's funny when someone's too single. Like been single too long. And you can tell they're kind of thirsty. And then, and then they're always talking about that. Like, so how do we... How, uh, like, they're always... Whatever you're talking about, they're trying to finagle that into like... So how do I... How do I okay, how do I meet a boyfriend though? Yeah, that's interesting. Is that a good place to meet a boyfriend? You know what I mean? Or like, is that a good place to meet people? Like some people will do that. Because that's what they're thinking about. And, and, but, but, but this work ethic thing, putting the joy in the work, you got to put the joy in the work. And that's what I mean by you got to go in, you got to reprogram it. Because if you don't reprogram it, then you're always working against yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I say you got to put the joy in the work, you got to put the joy in the work because if you don't put the joy in the work, you constantly have to work against yourself to do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? You're constantly having to negotiate. And I talked about like you're, you have a CEO of laziness in your head, right? And the only way to 
outsmart the CEO of laziness because I was talking about this, I think, in the first episode where it's like you are the CEO of your brain. OK, so every morning or once a week or whenever you sit down with like the leadership part of your brain sits down and says, OK, we're not eating chocolate cake anymore. We're not doing this anymore. We're not doing this. And to, right now we're going to work on this essay and we're going to get this done. Right. And as a boardroom in your brain, as the CEO, you lay down the line, you make a present, you, you make the case and everyone in your brain is like, OK, cool. We're all on board. And then who strolls in 20 minutes late? Chief laziness officer. Chief laziness officer comes in drops a banger presentation and says, hey, guys, uh, Game of Thrones just came out. We're behind on a Game of Thrones episode. So we're just going to walk around and, until it gets spoiled or do we want to get that done first? Great. That's what I thought. You know what I'm saying? Chief laziness officer comes in and does a banger presentation. You do what that, you do what the chief laziness officer wants. Now, if you, here's what happens. If you put the joy in the work, if you put the joy in the work, now guess what? Chief laziness officer is going to come in and chief laziness officer, I'm talking about the guy in your brain who doesn't want to do work, even he's going to cut or she, her, whatever they are, they're going to come in and they're going to, they're, instead of saying, hey, let's watch Game of Thrones, they're going to be like, hey, um, let's, the joy is in the work, right? I mean, they don't even have to come in maybe. Or they're going to come in and be like, hey, uh, we're just trying to get this work done, right? Ah, wouldn't it be great if we got it done more easily? Like now your laziness officer, instead of just taking you away from the work, now that the laziness officer is, look, you could say cutting corners, but I would say your laziness officer is probably coming up with innovations. How about let's call it that? That's what this corporation is. This Amish Patel Comedy Corporation. Listen, I'm in my parents' house right now. Think about this, guys. Think about this. And this is like you got your work ethic and you got to put the joy in the work. But this, you know, I remember I was watching a thing about where, where someone said that, uh, they were saying that, that, that necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity. And then I saw, and, but I remember I was thinking that if necessity is the mother of invention, laziness is like the absentee father. Because laziness is like, look, we can, can we, like innovation will come from laziness because laziness is the kind of person who's like, how can we just do this without doing work? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can we minimize the work? Like, I, like the, basically, you got to reprogram your brain to say, look, the joy is in the work. The joy is not in Game of Thrones. The joy is not on the porn website or whatever it is, whatever your issue is. It's not in the cake. The joy is not in the cake. The Lord put the best joy, took the finest joy that we can even possibly experience, and that finest joy of this life, it's in the work. And so once you do a reprogram the brain, even now your chief laziness officer, instead of saying, hey, let's go do Game of Thrones, now your laziness officer is now on board and saying, okay, how do we get this thing done? Like you just want to get this thing done. Now you have to have the integrity. You probably have to have like a chief ethical ethics officer in your brain so that when your chief laziness officer comes in and says, how can we get, hey, let's just murder this guy. What? Something awful. Let's just, oh, we just want to do get this done, right? And that guy's not letting us get it done. Let's go, you know, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's play with his brakes. I don't know, something stupid. Your laziness officer is that. That's lazy, right? It's innovative, but it's lazy. But then you have to have an ethics officer coming into your brain and say, hey, hey guys, uh, we're not going to do that. Rude. Rude. Don't, you can't do that. So now laziness officer goes back. Now listen, laziness officer might be the smartest officer in your brain, quite frankly. You know, and can you get him to work on something other than laziness? No, hands are tied. Even your chief laziness officer, you can tell him like, hey man, can you put a little bit of this effort? You work so hard on these great presentations. You found Game of Thrones clips somehow. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Where'd you get these Game of Thrones clips? It's not even out yet, you, but Chief Laziness Officer Wolf. No, the Chief Laziness Officer is incredibly hardworking, actually, at making you lazy. It's insane, right? I mean, the amount of work put in to convincing you to be lazy, like in your own brain, I'm saying. Like, have you ever seen, have you ever caught yourself doing so much mental gymnastics to justify your dumb, like, laziness? It's like, God, can you work on something productive? It's like, this is great. You know what I mean? Like you're there's sometimes your laziness officer is telling you a lie so big. Like, dude, sometimes your laziness officer is like, no, it's better if you eat chocolate cake because um, it's better if you don't do the work because then you'll be more tired and then you won't be able to do that other work. What? Who like who do you work for even? 
you're my chief laziness officer. Where are you coming up with these presentations? They're so creative. You know what I'm saying? Like the arguments that, that the work being put into being lazy is actually so much work. It's more work than doing your work. It, like, honestly. Because chief laziness officer is like, no, let's, let's, um, let's not do work. Let's do this other thing. But then doing that other thing is way more work too. It's like, no, that's going to take more energy. But your brain is like, no, no, no. Better that we do the, no, 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 you have to take a nap so that you can work harder later. What? Who are we even lying to right now? I, I don't even understand. But Chief Laziness Officer is a very good. It's very good like that. Chief Laziness Officer knows how to manipulate. And great sales presentations and great, great like, that's the, that's the one in your brain that's like, I know how to just not, like, I'm here to find ways to not do work. That's what my job is. You know what I'm saying? That's what your laziness officer does. He's like, I'm here to just make us not do work. So now what you can do, now the only way to, to counteract that, because really laziness officer is one of the hardest working, smartest people in your brain. So how do you counteract that? You have to go in, put the joy in the work. Because once you put the joy in the work, now your laziness officer is like, okay, cool. I'll work on doing that then. That's fine. That's above board. You know, that's that's fair even. That's your laziness officer is like, okay, cool. No, I got it. Oh, okay, this is the joy. Sure, got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because the laziness officer is sitting there going, like, with the programming that the joy is in the cake. The joy is in the Game of Thrones. The joy is in uh, whatever, right? But you put, uh, in drinking or something like that. But then you re you have to go into your brain, rewrite the code rewrite the code and now your laziness officer is working hard on cutting corners maybe and now maybe you need another officer to and now maybe your ethics officer has to come in and you know put set set that straight but at least at least you know because it is a fine line between cutting corners and life hacks and life hacks can be good you know what i'm saying life hacks can be good because because like i said some people say that uh, necessity is the mother of invention i would say laziness is like the absentee father. Here's, here's what I mean by laziness is the absentee father of um, invention. Here's what I mean. There was a time a thousand years ago when people didn't know how to ride horses, right? And they just walked. You know what I'm saying? You walked, right? It just seems pretty no-brainer. Like, okay, we need to go get the thing and we'll just walk over and get it and we'll bring it home and we'll have it. We'll walk. Like, that's what you do. It, to, it was the, the laziest person in the, tri in the tribe. It took the laziest person to look around and be like, these horses just walk back and forth. Let's sit on a horse and the horse will do the walking. Uh. And back then, how, what an annoying guy that was, right? That was basically the most annoying guy back then. Because back then, people, like, think about it. If you're back then, you'd be like, dude, we could have just walked there and come back by now. Like, it's right there. Let's just go. But this guy is so lazy that now he's going to, He's actually going to work 10 times harder than everyone else trying to figure out how to make a horse walk for you and how to sit on a horse and make the horse walk. That's laziness at the root core kernel that got that started. That's the laziness. This is such an incredible tip that I'm giving you guys. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I understand that I'm a comedian and maybe it doesn't sound serious. And maybe it's a little rambly, but this is a, this is an incredible tip guys. Make sure you go to laughsareup.com. Keep supporting, uh, content like this because this is such important work that I'm doing how much corny self-help is out there you know what I'm saying how much p how much self-help is out there saying work harder it's like ugh, work ugh, gross work harder that's hard why do I want to do that like this all of that motivational shit it's only going to pump up someone who's already hard working P lazy people and and this has literally happened when I drove back with this guy who and we were we jacked each other up on that hustle 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 dude we were doing monologues back and forth. Like he would do a monologue on like, this is why you got to work hard because you work hard and you get better and there's growth and then you're better at that. And then you know what? You get the next thing. I'm making moves into Europe. I'm making moves into America. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if I'm not, I don't care if I even get famous. He's on that tip, dude. I don't care if I even get famous. The joy is in the work. The Lord gave me work. The joy is in the work. I'm going to do the work until I die because that's it. Why? Because the joy is in the work. 
he put the joy in the work, dude. He's even on that level where he's like, he's like, I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this. But also, I don't care if I don't get famous. I have no sense of entitlement even. I work because the joy is in the work. The Lord gives me a pure joy just for doing the work and getting it done right. There's a joy in that. And that's like a, that's a Hindu thing and that's a Christian Protestant thing. Because the Hindus have the Bhagavad Gita and they teach this this like karma. And that's what it was all about when you read it. It's like it's all about like just work for the sake of work. Just work. I mean, it's a great thing to teach slaves, honestly. And they did have slaves. Not to be a dick, but the caste system, it's basically slavery with levels. You know what I'm saying? That's what the caste system is, basically. Then you got an ideology like that that says, just work, baby. The joy is in the work. Now, here's the thing. That might have been a manipulative thing, maybe. But in today's culture, if you're in Canada, if you're in America, it's the best mentality to adopt. It really is. And it's the best mentality to adopt if you're doing something good. Now, here's the thing that scares me about these work ethic guys, these hardworking guys, the guys that are in comedy and they work like that hard. What I, what scares, well, not scares me, but what I appreciate is that I'm like, good thing you're in comedy because if you were some CEO of some oil company, you'd just murder the planet. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the, that's the dark side of it. You know, and I tell my, uh, man, there's, uh, my other buddies like this too, Ryan Long. So good. I mean, I think he'll take this as a shout out. Such a hardworking dude. And he just did three seasons of Torontopia. So competitive. Every time I talk to him, he's like, just booked a show. Did you book something? Uh, like, he's like that kind of like, would you book? What'd you book? Just booked a TV series and a movie. Booked it. What are you booking? Like, he's like that. Where's your moves, Amish? You're sm- Dude, that's another thing about hardworking people, work ethic people. They poke at you. If you're not working, they're kind of like, ugh. You're not bringing the heat lately, Amish? You're not bringing the heat lately, Amish? What's up? What's the next project? What's the next thing, dog? You know what I'm saying? He's that kind of guy, work ethic kind of guy. We are all lucky that he's not in an oil company. We are all lucky that he's not working for Nestle. Dude, he would, this planet would be done now, basically. Basically, this planet would be dead. Because they don't care. Dude, it's all, get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> Luckily, they're doing comedy. Dude, if they're doing something else. It's, I mean, Bill Bird did this joke about um, uh, uh, the steroids guy, Armstrong. <laughs> Or Bill, Bill Burr kind of did this joke where he's like, man, it's a good thing this guy's on a bike or else he'd, he would have polluted all the water or whatever. You know what I'm saying? At the head of some corporation. It's true even for these work ethic people. It's, it's good putting the joy in the work. It's good as long as you're not doing some sociopath shit. It's incredible, man. It's so good. It really is the right way to live. And maybe I'm telling you guys and I'm kind of trying to tell myself because when I say just reprogram your brain, it's not easy. But part of how you reprogram your brain is when you say things out loud, your brain thinks that you think that. Isn't that fucked up? Your brain is literally like if you say something out loud, your brain is like, oh, we believe that. That's why a lot of times with these echo chambers, you look at like hard politics where people are in their echo chambers you look at like Candace Owens, right? I just saw a great video. And Candace Owens, uh, I, don't, I, I never know how to just introduce these people. But she's be, she's the one who got Kanye West to wear the MAGA hat. I feel like I've talked about her like five times now, though. And we're on episode six. So I feel like you should know who Candace Owens is. Candace Owens, she's the one who got uh, Kanye West to wear the Make America Great Again hat. She's basically like a black um, activist for this hard right wing uh, think tank called Turning Point USA. Ah. Such a bullshit organization. Turning Point USA, shut up. What does that mean? Turning Point, hey, what do you do? Oh, I work for Turning Point USA. What the fuck, what do you do? Oh, we're spreading the word that conservatism is the right way to think. Basically, that's what they're doing. And they got Candace Owens to bring up, they brought her on to be this, to do these banger speeches to get, basically to get black people to the, um, to vote conservative. Because I think they're recognizing that it's a huge voting block. And the Democrats got them on lock because the Democrats, I think, actually care about immigrants, people of color, every, every, all that stuff. I don't think it's in the right wing mentality to care about that. But why did I bring her up? The reason I brought her up, the reason I brought her up is because, oh, I was going to say people are in their echo chambers. And I think and if you look at Candace Owens career, it started off like she tried to be a left wing person 
and she tried to do like a publicity stunt as a lefty and that didn't work and then she tried to do another publicity stunt as like another ideology and then that didn't work and then she did this right wing thing and it became viral so she's like oh I hate left wing people now I hate them but here's what happens it happened to her it happened to David Rubin too David Rubin's like a gay guy who basically does the same thing he became this right wing commentator YouTuber uh, podcast or whatever and both of them what happens is because a lot of people think that they're just fake and they're just lying kind of like they're just saying these conservative views even though they don't really believe it and here's the thing if you keep saying something your brain is like no I'm not, we're not hypocrites you believe it so I think a little bit of me telling you guys to reprogram your brain so that the joy is in the work it's a little bit me trying to tell myself the same thing too because naturally if I can be totally honest quite frank with you guys I'm a naturally lazy person I'm a prince, my darling. I'm a prince. It's so hard to work hard when, and I think I've said this before, but it's so hard to work hard when you love yourself as much as I do. I really do. Like, I don't need anyone. I can just, have, I can just be by myself and have fun. <laughs> I could just entertain myself, you know? And maybe I'm a sociopath for starting my own Amish Patel Comedy Corporation. And getting laughsarup.com and telling you guys that if you go to laughsarup.com and you join my thing, then you can become an investor and you can, you'll can you know when the laughs are going up. I mean, maybe it is a little bit of a too much what I'm trying to do. But, but in order to get it done, I think it is important work that I'm doing. It's great work. And in order to get it done, I do need to do that reprogramming in my own brain that the joy is in the work. Ah, work is great. Because God is great and God gave us work to do. That makes God great. And if it isn't paid, well, God pays double for that. Ah, dude, people, how are you going to compete? If you're lazy, how are you going to compete? The thing that I want to talk about is that when I came back with this dude, we're driving back and we're, we're getting into this, like it, our conversation at this point, because it's like an hour drive to Hamilton, hour drive back. Towards the last 20 minutes of the, of the drive back, our conversation just became me giving him a motivational speech and him being like, yeah, man, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, and then him dropping, and then him being like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I got one, bomb, and then him doing like a five-minute motivational speech back, and then while he was doing his, I was like, tell him, brother, amen, preach it, preach it, tell him, tell him, the joy is in the work, brother, the joy is in the work, that's where God put it. Here's the here's why you need to you need to reprogram your brain because in this life what I'm realizing is that you have to work. There's just no way out, man. There's no way out. You got to work. And and this is what I was going to say. I'm driving back with this guy. We're giving each other these speeches, bam 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 back and forth monologues. The joy is in the work, brother. That's what the Lord put us here to do. God is great, brother. God is great. Dude, we were we were like yelling God is great to each other. Just for the, because the work. God is so great for giving us this work. That's how God make it, brother. That's how God make it. Like we were going hard deep into the speeches. Then I go around to the other comics because then I left. He went to do another set. I went to do karaoke. And I even told him when I went to do karaoke, I was like, listen, it's still a set because we're all comedy actors. We're dancing. We're singing. Even he, this, this like hard dude comic, this like male almost jo like jock-ish comment. Ah, fuck, he's going to get mad now. But I don't mean it as a diss. I mean, like, you know, he works hard, man. He works hard. He's got that work ethic, baby. So he's, he's he, he, even he, when I told him, like, no, I'm doing karaoke. No, it's a set. He was like, I'm going to go do another set. And I was like, I'm doing karaoke. I was like, I'm going to go do karaoke. And he's like, I'm going to do another set. And I said, oh, I'm doing a set too, brother. I'm doing a set too. And he was like, what? what? You're doing karaoke? And I said, mm, brother, I'm a comedy actor. We're working on dances. We're working on performance. The body is my instrument. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drink. The joy is in the work. The, the joy is in the work, brother. And the karaoke, that's another set. Stage time, stage time. And he actually agreed with me. Can you believe it? I totally thought most people that I tell them, like, hey, man, good set. I, do, I joke about it after karaoke. I'll be like, hey, man, good set. And most comics are like, how dare you? Don't, don't sully do not sully stand-up comedy by calling what these fools do art. It's not art. They're singing someone else's words. And in stand-up, we say our own words. And we do have, and that's true. But performance, stage time, working on the pipes, voice work, time in the game, baby. 
Time in the game. The joy is in the work, brother. So anyway, he goes to do another set. I go to do karaoke. And then as soon as I get to karaoke, karaoke though, karaoke doesn't have that those set, set, set kind of guys. Karaoke is another is that group that's like kind of the improv alt sketch blending into feminist guys. <laughs> I'm generalizing huge. But but um but because basically, and Bill Burr talks about this too. There's basically two types of white guys right now. You got your like like your 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 like work ethic. I'm gonna be a man. Nothing wrong with being a man, kind of guys in comedy. This is Bill Burr even saying this. You got your like you got your basically like cranky guys like fucking Bill Burr, like that type of guy, right? Like cranky and like I tell it like it is, and uh, this is what this is what it's about. Sorry, you offended. Like that's just such classic comedy. It's so Bill Burr, and it, not to say that it's not it's incredible. Like those are some like. Honestly, some of the best comics, but yeah, no, it's, it's like that group has the best, but also the worst. Like they have incredible people when they're good, but on the way to becoming good, it's just hell for those guys. Because if you're one of those guys that that's like, I want to say what I want and I want to be this opinionated guy like Bill Burr and tell it like it is, then basically until you're funny, you're just saying offensive shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel so bad for them. Because they're, tw- they're idiots. They're like 19, 20 years old. They don't know anything when they start. Or even until they're 25, they're dumb still. They're not funny. And they only want to do the hardest topics. And they only want to do this telling it like it is shit. And it's like, yeah, sorry, dude. You're not funny yet. So basically, you just went up and said five minutes of offensive shit that nobody likes. Oh, I found a great clip of this. Great clip of this in this cringe compilation. Oh, my God. I'm going to play it right here. Ah. Oh. It's like this guy who just comes in. What a dirtbag. Look at this. Worst comic, dude. What is your... Dude. Like, what a loser. He just comes in. He gets this guy, this this musician, to say it. And then he goes, that's why Trump won. Sorry, telling it like it is. Get out of here. What a loser. It's like, yeah, you're just not funny. And that wasn't even that offensive. It was kind of offensive on the level of like, you just insulted a guy who was nice enough to comply with you because you're in a show. And he's trying to make this point about like, that's why Donald Trump won. (laughs) Zero laughs. Can I go now? Ah! So funny because in his head, he thought he was going to kill. Right? In his head, he thought he was going to kill him. He thought he was going to murder that set. And then everyone just kind of was like, eh, you're a loser. It just so quickly, man. So funny how so quickly uh, people just go from like, come on, we're going to do it to like, okay, well, I'm done. <laughs> okay, so I found this coma inducing cringe compilation. Oh my God, this guy, these guys are so good that put together these compilations. But basically it's in this, uh, <laughs> the comic that I'm talking about. Uh, so awkward. Okay, let's go to the let's go to the clip. Let's do a play by play on this. This is such a classic, like white guy who white guy who like wants to do Bill Burr shit, but they're not funny yet. And it's just sad. Like I don't want to diss, you know. I don't want to just diss these guys so hard because Bill Burr is great now. He's so good. <laughs> you know what I mean. And, um, and, and I get it, you know, like people are offended and they don't, they just don't want you to say shit. And it's like, as a guy who doesn't have any interest in doing offensive jokes, it is interesting to just watch it from the outside, um, and just be like, okay, okay, here's the issue. You know what I'm saying? Here's the issue. You're just not funny yet. You know, you got, you got the making, maybe one day you'll be Bill Burr. It's just not funny yet. So it's not whatever. Anyway, this is the guy doing a great job, Pat. Thank you. Uh, you think you could do me a favor for this joke? It's just part of the joke. If you could like stand up and salute me real quick. Okay. Just do it. <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks so much. That was really nice of him. Uh, it's also why I think Donald Trump might become president. That's why Donald Trump might become president. Whoa, so he's not even president yet. Too much, Jesse. It's just not funny yet, dude. And it's also so douchey. Like, you got him to do it. So funny, though, when a comic thinks, like, he thinks he's got a banger on his hands. Just watch what happens. 
Just compliment someone, put it in the context of a joke, and an idiot will make a fool of himself. And an idiot will make a fool of himself. Dude, the guy was nice enough to fucking... St- oh, my God. Just these people. Okay, he might be like a future Bill Burr type. <laughs> But he also just might be like on Fox News one day because conservatives, it's hard to tell. I'm not saying that they're all the same or whatever, but conservatives are missing, don't fundamentally understand what sense of humor is. They just don't get it. So at this point, it's, it's hard to tell. He could go either way. We don't know. If he's like 20, he could go either way. He could end up being like a, like a hilarious comic who is an important contribution to the culture, to the community, I think. Because there, f- there is a good perspective that is brought from these guys. And I know a lot of people think that, like, no, you got to, like, just all outright ban people, but I don't believe in that. Anyway, um, I mean, if you listen to a Bill Burr bit all the way through, it's so positive by the end. They're never offensive. They're, it's always, like, by the end of the bit, you're, it's always, like, men are shit. To or like something, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh. um, sorry. How much time do I have left? Ah! <laughs> sorry. Like he just realized, I guess. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh. um, sorry. How much time do I have left? Uh, that'd be funny if like he's walking out and the guy salutes him again. That'd be so funny. How much time do I have left? Do your time, loser. Ugh. How much time do I have left? Get out of here, man. Like, <laughs> it's so hard, man. Like, if you're not funny yet to try and do stuff like that, it's so hard. Oh, how much time do I have left? Ah, oh, loser. Such a loser, dude. Come on. <laughs> Came in so hard thinking he's Donald Trump. That's the problem with Donald Trump is that he's making too many idiots think that they can do what he does. And you can't. Donald Trump is a sociopath on another level. And there's just basic, basic guys like this that without even trying some shit, like until he did that bit, he thought like, I'm going to be Donald Trump. Or I'm going to be the guy that shows everyone that this is how he wins, but I'll use it for good or something like that. You know what I mean? Like he's thinking it's that easy. It's not that easy, dude. You want to be Trump? You got to sit in that and you got to keep going with it. Because you got to be a sociopath, man. You watch the Donald Trump documentary. Oh, my God. All these people who believe, who like Donald Trump, watch the documentary. I mean, all these people who like Donald Trump, and but, but they think that like, because a lot of people really think that like, yeah, man, the game is the game. You got to take it. That's, you know, that's what I would do. I, I can hustle. I can tell it like it is. I go hard. Like Donald Trump, and then it's like, no, 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 you don't get it, man. You got to watch the documentary, and you got to see where he went hard. Um, And you got to see how little he gave a fuck, dude. Like, he, are you down to step on people? Because he stepped on people. He was so down to destroy someone's life, you know what I mean? And we'll get into that in another episode. But right now, we got to talk about work ethic. And I keep, uh, I keep switching topics, but... The laughs are up. Listen, we're having a discussion and the laughs are up and uh, we're six episodes in and I think by the 10th episode, it's going to get very tight with like sticking to one thing maybe, but maybe not. Look, this is, this is what we're doing. But so anyway, uh, I'm driving back with this dude. We're jacking each other up on this work ethic, like these motivational speeches about work ethic. Like, let's go get it, get it, get it. And then he's like, I'm going to go do another set. And I was like, I'm going to go do karaoke. No, no, I said, I'm going to go do karaoke. And then he's like, I'm going to do another set. And I was like, uh, actually, karaoke is a set too. Stage time, stage time. And he was like, what? And then I was like, no. Well, performance, singing, using the chords. And then he basically said, this is how in the game he is. He basically said like, yeah, if you do videos and do some YouTube shit about it, yeah, that's work. That's work. It's like he knows the game too. Like he works on YouTube shit too, right? So anyway, I go to these guys and they're the more chill comics. Like they're not the, they're, they're like the sillier white guys that even Bill Burr talks about how there's like the jock white guys. And then there's the white guys that are like silly jokes, more alt comedy, uh, anyone doing character kind of stuff on stage. Um, there's the, there's that crew. And then there's people that are doing like political shit, but it's like lefty shit. You know what I'm saying? So there, so there's that crew of of, um, 
of uh, of white guys and, and and if it was a high school that would be like the different crews that would be like two of the crews right right let's say so then i go around those guys and those guys don't believe in the work ethic they kind of think that if you have too much of a work ethic maybe you're a sociopath that's kind of their thinking <laughs> You know what I mean? So as soon as I got back to around these guys now, I was talking about like, man, we're talking about work, we're talking about that hustle, baby. And right away, I just got into like the exact opposite discussion of like, well, why is that so important? What about work-life balance? One guy just, one guy was so funny. As soon as I said, like, we're talking about this hustle, we're talking about like, get whatever. And this guy goes, yes, but do they understand irony? Eh. Dude, there's a lot of people that honestly would rather be, I don't know, they don't, they, they, I guess, I guess, you know, people, people think differently, people think different. And some people have put the joy in the work. And some people are kind of like, no, I want work life balance. I want to work and then I want to be able to relax and do something else. And I just want to hang out with people. I want to go dancing. I want to go on a date. There's guys who are like, I want to go, I like to go on a date. I like to set up a date. And I'm just becoming a guy like that, I think because I'm old. And I'm getting soft. But dude, through my 20s, through through until basically a year ago, I just looked at dating as a waste of time. And a lot of a lot of work ethic people, they either look at dating as a waste of time or I'm looking for a wife. I'm looking for a wife that I can marry and have great children with to start a family because the my career will be supported by the family and I want to move up in the game and I want to be get ahead and I need a good support system at home and I'm looking for a good wife. There's some people like that. There's some people like that. They're out here to get it. Even with even with getting married and getting laid, they even have that kind of like, let's go get it, get it, get it. And then there's these more chill guys. There's these more chill guys that are like, well, I don't believe in that. Well, you know, when I meet someone that's good. There's literally, here's, here's, here's a, a, a great way to see the distinction between work ethic guys and kind of chill guys. I remember, and this is so like brown Asian people are so, I generalizing obviously, are so about that work ethic too. Because they're literally like, dude, my parents won't love me. You know what I'm saying? Like these guys, the, like the chill white guy is so, I, I hate to say, they have this conversation like this, but like the more chill kind of white guys, they their parents, I think a big part of it is their parents love them so much the way they are that they're just like, you know, if it happens this year, it happens. If not, I'll do, you know, I'm sure I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. No big deal. Like, they kind of have that attitude. Like, whereas the work ethic guys, like, I'm making moves into America. I'm making moves into Hawaii. I'm making moves into England. These kind of chill guys are like, well, I was working on a thing, and then I kind of realized that um, it's not what I want to say. So I kind of shelved that project, and then I started working on another project, and then um, I'm just waiting to hear back on on some stuff, and I'll probably work a little harder than, than that on that in the summer maybe, but, you know. I mean, I just want to, you know, I, I'm actually more focused on, um, I, I got into meditation. Like, they might say something like that. They might be like, oh, no, I, I just, uh, I actually joined a softball league. And I'm like, dude, softball league? Like, even even for me, I'm like, we're already comedians. What's this softball league? Like, that's more work, isn't it? I mean, I guess, look, hey, go do that, and then maybe you'll find jokes there too, right? Because you got to live life to find the jokes. And I'm treating karaoke like a set, so maybe you can justify softball as a I don't know. But anyway, the point is, is that is that the big way to see the difference in how people think is, and I get this a lot with brown, brown, black people too, brown, brown, Asian, where it's literally like my parents won't love me though. Like I need to be, I need to get success so that my parents love me. And a lot of these white guys, their parents are just like, oh, just, I think it's so great, honey, that you're doing what you love. And I just, I respect it, and I think you should keep going for it, honey. I love you, and it was just so great what you did. Dude, that's so sweet. How do you work hard, though? How are you going to have any kind of work ethic? And, 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 and here's the big difference. I remember, because I went to Just for Last two years ago. No big deal. Bragging, I know. But it's basically impossible to get in. When I got into Just for Laughs, like, okay, I'll say this. When, when a comic gets into Just for Laughs, or when an improv person gets on the Second City main stage... When they announce that on Facebook, they should announce who got in and then they should just put a link to a therapist. I mean, honestly, it's, uh, it's, people get so sad. People get so sad because people are trying to get in and people are 10, 15 years in and they still haven't gotten in. Whatever, dude, you didn't get into this and you didn't get into that. Who gives a shit? But anyway, the point is, is that I remember I was talking to like, like the work ethic people, like people that are like, let's go, let's get it, get it, get it, get it. Um, 
so Asian brown and then so like these these hustle kind of white guys so much that if you ask them like like they're the kind of people that two years into comedy three years into comedy they're like oh how do I get in just laughs how do I get in and 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 that's if they're the white guys because then they have I feel like a lot of Asian people come in <laughs> and this is myself too we come in and in six months we're like okay so how do you get just for laughs maybe I'll be the prodigy how do I get in how do I get in how do I get in I can do just for laughs I'll do it how do I get in? And then I talk to, but then there's like the more chill white guys 10 years in. And I'm like, oh, so do you think, uh, oh, did you do a set for Just for Laughs? And those, and I swear to God, this guy said this to me 10 years in. You know what he said? He's like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't think I'm quite ready for that. I think, um, you know, I, I think, I think I'm putting a set together now that uh, it'll probably be ready next year. Maybe. Wow. Can you like, just look at the difference between the work ethic people that are like, get it, get it, get it, get it. And maybe they're not as happy in this moment. And maybe they put the joy in the future. But a lot of them have done this reprogram where it's like the joy is in the work. But a lot of them are people who are miserable and their joy is in the future. They don't have any joy. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's that. That's the so I feel like that's the that's the sociopath type. That's like the joy. Like, I can't be happy. I'm not good enough. I got to do this so that maybe I can be happy one day. I got to do all this and then maybe my parents will love me. If I get into Just Flash, maybe my parents will love me again. I don't know. They hate me because I'm a comic. But maybe if I get into Just Flash, maybe they'll care about that. Guess what? They don't give a shit, dude. If they're Asian, they don't even know what the fuck Just Flash is. I mean, if not if they're, if, I mean, if they're, if they're not first generation. Like, if they're, if, they, if they're born in Canada, sure. But mostly it's like immigrant parents. They don't give a shit, dude. I told my mom that I got a, they, they applied for an Emmy nomination for me. For this kids TV show, I told my mom, and my mom's just like, "Oh yeah, how much do you get paid for that?" And I was like, "Oh, um, well, actually, if you get nominated for the Emmy, you have to pay them four hundred dollars to go. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> if you get nominated for Emmy and you want to go get it, you have to pay four hundred dollars to for the ticket to go to the Emmys, <laughs> and you got to get a stylist and you got to get a suit. Like it's a big deal, right?" And I'm telling her all this, and she just stopped listening. She was just like, okay, okay, okay. Like, she just, it made her, like, more sad even. She's like, oh, this is another one of your bullshits. I, she doesn't care. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, just get, just get, might get nominated for an Emmy mom. And my mom's just like, oh, they pay? Mm, well, you kind of have to pay them. Okay. Don't, don't tell, don't, 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 when you're famous, tell me, I don't know, dude, she doesn't give a shit, right, but it's almost like an internal feeling, it's like, hey, maybe if I get this just for last, maybe my parents will love me again, so a lot of Asian comics have that, a lot of ethnic, and then, a, and then these work ethic guys, they're kind of like, okay, I've done my work, I put the time in, where's my just for laughs, how do I get in, what do I do, and then there's the more chill guys that are kind of like, you know, I don't know if I'm ready for that, and then another guy I was talking to, I think we went together, or no, he went the year before me, but I was talking to this other guy, and he just goes, he was like, we're talking about going to Just for Laughs again, and he's like, well, you know, we went, we should let someone else go. <coughs> That's so cute. That's so funny, dude. Imagine booking a TV show, and then the next TV show, you're like, well, I just, I just shot a TV show, why is this, let someone else be on this TV show. Dude, no actor would do that. You'd have to be, I guess you'd have to be so famous, like, you'd have to be so famous that you're like, you know what, man? I don't think it's the right part for me. And uh, I think there's, you know, here's another guy. He's great. That's like high level shit, dude. That's high. Okay, if you're a millionaire and you have so many offers coming in. Dude, we're Canadian comics. We went to Just for Laughs. Nobody really cares. You're not rich just for going to Just for Laughs. Okay? It's Canada. Okay? We should be trying to go back all the time. But we're chill. We don't care. Because maybe because our parents love us too much. And maybe because I love myself too much. But I think the most important thing you can do, because I do need to wrap this up now. I went into a lot of tangents tonight. But I do need to wrap up this work ethic thing. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, what you got to do for the work ethic, what you got to do is you got to put the joy in the work. You know, if there's one thing I can leave you with, you got to put the joy in the work. And let's go over the reasons why. Number one, because you have to work. That's the thing about this life, man. There's no fucking way out, God damn it. As you get older, you realize this. There's no way out. There's some people that are like, when can I stop working? Never. The answer to that is never. There's some people that really think that, man. Even my dad is always telling me like, oh, then you'll do this and this and then you'll be rich. It's like, dude, no. You don't get to stop, ever. 
You work until you die. That's life, I think, man. And here's the really depressing thing about it is that there are some people who got rich and they don't technically have to work. Those people are miserable. Why? Because they're not working. You have to work, man. I think the joy is in the work, actually. You know? And I know I'm like telling you guys and maybe I'm trying to tell myself this and trying to figure this out myself too. I'm just learning this about myself too. Because after I booked this kid's TV show, I kind of got lazy. After the Just for Laughs and the kid's TV show and then I got this Kevin Hart thing. I'm such a, I'm such a piece of shit for bragging this much. But, um, <clears throat> but you get lazy. You get apathetic. You just feel internal. Even if I'm not a millionaire, internally I just feel like, eh, I'm good. I'm good. I killed it better than anyone I know. What, do I got to keep working? Nah. You know what I'm saying? And then it's been like, it's been a while of that. I'm not going to say how long, but it's been a while of being like, hey, I made it. I'm good. What did just for laughs? Who gives a shit? I'll just be a cut, like, whatever. And, and when you get, when that apathy kicks in, it, you think it's enlightenment. You think you're enlightened. You think you're some Buddhist, like, oh, I don't believe in all that. I don't believe in materialism. I don't believe in moving ahead. And I don't believe in working hard. But really... That's your chief laziness CEO. Not CEO, your chief laziness officer. Chief laziness officer will fuck you up, dude. That's the be- one of the best tricks that chief laziness officer has, dude. Is chief laziness officer, he tries to tell you, oh, no, we're enlightened. We don't believe in work. Oh, gr- oh good one, buddy. Good one. Yeah, that's great. We don't believe in all that. What are you, a sociopath? What are you, a conservative? You want to work so hard? I became a comic so I don't have to work. I became a comic so I can just tell jokes. No, baby. You got to work until you die, man. And I don't mean that like I'm not saying that you won't ever save up enough money so that you don't have to work anymore. I'm not saying that that, that could happen. You, could, you might save up so much money that you don't have to work again. Fine. You still got to work. You still got to work because, because the joy is in the work. The joy is in the work. It's, it's, it, it, it might be the most optimal way to live life. And I think one of the cornerstone ideals of this corporation is going to be joyful productivity. The, the pro, you must be productive, and it's gotta, but you got to make it joyful. You know what I'm saying? Because if you go too hard on one side and, you're, and you become like, like this, like, oh, I don't believe in work, then you're just lazy. It's, 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 it's enlightenment, but really it's apathy. Like you think you're enlightened, but really you're apathetic. You know what I'm saying? Because that whole mentality of like, oh, they work hard. Oh, are they funny? It's like, dude, <laughs> not, and I'm not, I don't want to cause shit. I don't want to like cause beef or anything. Nobody said that about the, the guy that I was with, by the way. Whatever. But they were just saying like, there's a lot of like the more chill comics. You talk about working hard and that that's the first, one of the first things they'll say is like, yeah, but are they funny? Because I know a lot of guys that work hard, but they're not funny, baby. So I don't want to be like that. I want to be, I'd rather be funny and not be successful than what work hard and then you're not even funny you're like a weird conservative okay maybe some people just work and work and they don't they never get funny but generally speaking the people that work hard they're going to get ahead of you and here's the thing right on the one hand you have that laziness you have that apathy because you're maybe you're just putting the joy in not doing anything but then on the other side there's people who are i think sociopaths and they're crazy and they work all the time because for them they don't have the joy. The joy is in the future somewhere. <laughs> the do- for, there's the sociopath people. They, they put the joy in the future. They put the joy in like, and, and I'm talking about like these Gomesh types, these Cosby types. You know what I'm saying? They're, jo- they're not getting joy out of day-to-day life. Their joy is like, I need to be so rich that I can just hurt someone. That's where their joy is. So they're just like, okay, well, do whatever the work I got to do because the only way to get my joy, like they don't care about chocolate cake. They don't care about holding hands with someone. Their joy is like, no, 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 I got to be so powerful that like I can just hurt a person. That's my joy. That's their joy. But then the in-between, if you can do it ethically, if you can do it the right way, then I think the right way to do it is you got to put the joy in the work. I think I'm going to call it, guys. I think I'm going to call it. What a beautiful message. Joy in the work. I mean, I don't know. Maybe some of you guys are like, yeah, I already knew that. But I feel like some of you guys are going to be like, fuck, that's good, dude. And if you can imagine you can reprogram your brain so that the joy is actually in the work and now your laziness officer is working on that and now your whole brain is working on like, well, how can we do more of the right work then? And that's all you feel like doing. That's the future, baby. That's where we all got to go. That's where we got to go because if, we, if you don't do it, then basically a bunch of sociopaths are going to rule us. <laughs> My 
darlings, thank you for consuming this social media content from the Amish Patel Comedy Corporation. My name is Amish Patel, CEO of the Amish Patel Comedy Corporation. And uh, listen, if you're still watching this, you must really be in love with me. Or else, what are you doing here? It's the internet. You could be, you could be watching anything. You could be watching anything. But you're here. You love it. So why don't you just go ahead and subscribe? Okay? Hit the bell button, too. And then they'll let you know when I got more bits coming out. And I'll tell you this. I got bits. I'm sitting on bits, guys. So many bits. So many, I'm sitting on, I've over, I'm overstocked on bits and I am working hard to bring them to market for your consumption. So subscribe to the channel. Also, uh, if you want to watch a bit right now, you can, there's a, there's a bit right, you can click on the box right below me. That's a bit. You can click on me. It'll take you to a secret bit or you can go to laughsareup.com. You can listen to the full pod, podcast where these bits are cut out of. You can join the mailing list. You can uh, be notified, you'll be notified of live stand up comedy shows coming to your area and you can learn about all of the investment opportunities at the Amish Patel Comedy Corporation. To do that, go to laughsareup.com or keep getting the bits or subscribe to make sure you keep getting future bits. Or, you know what? Share the video then, too. If you're still here, if you're still here, I mean, what are you doing? You should be working for me at this point. I mean, at this point, you're an investor. Time is money. You spent your time. You're an investor. And if you look at our business model over here, you'll see at the top social media bits. That's what we're watching right now. That's at the top. But if you follow it all the way to the bottom, do you see on that ground floor? It says fans and investors. That's you guys. You are at the ground floor of a very exciting business opportunity here at the Mish Patel Comedy Corporation. So, like I said, go to laughsrup.com, join the mailing list, uh, listen to the full podcast. I think I said everything. That's all the stuff I got to say. Okay? Okay? God is great.